Well, good evening. Uh, I'm Cal Ward, and uh, we are at Central Baptist for Wednesday Night Live here. And I uh, want to welcome those who are joining us live here from our prayer chapel at Central, and also welcome those who are watching from home. Before we begin tonight, I just want to share a couple of announcements. Uh, one is this. Um, next week, we are going to celebrate the Lord's Supper here on Wednesday night. So we invite you, as you're thinking about next Wednesday service, to gather uh, some bread or uh, some juice so that you can join us and we can have a virtual communion. Here we'll be using those little kits again and probably using those for a little while as we kind of continue to do the social distancing. Uh, so that's next Wednesday. And I'm going to give you a heads up two weeks from tonight. Uh, we're not going to be meeting here. Uh, the uh, group of churches from across the state of Rhode Island are planning a prayer week. And they're going to be doing a prayer walk across the state of Rhode Island from the top all the way down to the bottom and, and all the way around. And each evening they're going to be having a, a prayer gathering outdoors, uh, socially distanced, time of kind of standing and praying for our state, for our leaders, for the situation in the world around us. And so in two weeks, uh, the meeting is going to be on Wednesday night up at Seventh-day Baptist in Ashley. And so I thought since it's so close, it's in our area that we should be participating. I'm going up. If anybody else would like to go, uh, you're welcome to join us. So we won't be meeting here in two weeks. Also, on the 27th, we have a couple of special things planned for that Sunday morning. Uh, probably going to be a shorter sermon, but we're going to have an opportunity to have a believer's baptism. Mabel Payne is going to be baptized that day. And we're also going to take a couple of minutes during our service to recognize our first responders. Uh, we have, for the last four years, had a very big celebration uh, that was town-wide and, and involved in all the churches. But this year, because of the COVID, we are going to encourage the churches to do something. So we're going to do something that Sunday. If you know someone who we should invite, a first responder, that you'd like that, we're going to send out special invitations and take a moment in our service just to thank them and recognize them. Um, well, also, for the parents of a question, uh, we are planning to open our Sunday school and get back to uh, a little bit of semblance of normal on the first Sunday in October. But uh, somewhere along the line, we thought, well, we should ask some of our parents. Some of you may be coming back this week with your children or whatnot. Uh, but uh, if our parents are listening, watching these broadcasts, we'd love to have you just give us your feedback. Are you ready to come back on the first Sunday of October? Would you bring your kids to Sunday school? Will we meet during the worship hour? Let us know. Same thing goes for child care. If you have really little ones, would you feel comfortable sending them upstairs to child care? Uh, I think we're going to go ahead. We've already started some of our adult Bible studies, so adult Sunday school will probably begin on that Sunday. Uh, this Sunday, 9 a.m. parking lot service for those who still would rather be in their car, uh, and then 10.30 a.m. for our morning worship. Well, that's our announcement. Let's get to worship now. We have a call to worship. And uh, I'm going to invite you to share in our call to worship together. Welcome this evening to the house of Elohim, our God, where we worship our Creator in a community of faith. We are greeted in peace and love and hope and grace as sisters and brothers in Christ. Friends, let us worship Adonai. This week we have some special music, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a real, real special music. Uh, someone we don't know, but uh, we probably have heard of. And so I'm going to ask Jackie if she will turn on our special music. Caleb and Kelsey.
I, I heard that song and it just moved my heart. And I know that they're really praying like uh, for a child, a baby, maybe their coming baby or maybe one of their children. But uh, as I was pulling together the components of this service tonight, I'm going to be talking about Jeremiah and Jeremiah's call to the ministry. And actually it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And I think that uh, many parents have had that experience of, of knowing and loving and praying for their children. And so um, it's just a beautiful sentiment. As we gather together tonight, though, I want to just take a few moments before we get into the Word to uh, pause and to pray. I got a call this morning um, uh, from actually Marsha Erskine let me know that Pat Chipperfield had passed away. Uh, Dick and Pat uh, started coming to our church a while back. Uh, Dick's family uh, has a connection here. He's Bob's brother. You know Bob. And, uh, and, and they just enjoyed coming here so much. But uh, with this whole time of the pandemic, uh, and actually probably just before, uh, it was hard for them to continue living alone. And so they moved over to the Royal Nursing Home. And, uh, and so they've been there for a while. Uh, but... Um, you know, it's been hard, and so actually this morning, Pat, and she had been failing, and she went home to be with the Lord, and so I talked with her daughter Pam, and some of the other family were there today, and they're planning a service. It's going to be at St. Clair's. Pat was Roman Catholic, and although she loved coming here, uh, the family so appreciates the fact that we welcome them here, and so we'll think of, we'll think of uh, Dick in our prayers, and we'll think of the rest of the family tonight as well. I want to also lift up Dave Collins, Dave Collins, uh, Dave uh, had, uh, yesterday, he was scheduled for, I'm trying to think what day it was, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, um, for uh, uh, angiogram, and they're hoping that uh, they could solve this problem, he had a heart blockage, that they could do that and put a stent in without having to do more invasive surgery. So uh, I haven't heard the results yet, but I'm just lifting up Dave and Minnie in our prayers. I want to continue to lift up uh, Bruce Titterington. Alice, Allison Beat. I want to lift up Amy O'Brien, our neighbor next door, Susan. I want to lift up Nika Hall and Denny Cthulhu, Cthulhu. Um, I want to lift up John Sr. and Davey, Bob and Diane Johnson's great nephew, who's had a second surgery. I want to lift up also a few others. I want to lift up Irene Servidio in our continuing prayers, and uh, Lori Willems, that's Joanne Fayola's daughter. I want to lift up a few of our, we're talking about first responders. I want to lift up, uh, again, I'm thinking of uh, Joseph Nicolosi, Karen Siafi's son, who's a New York City detective policeman. And we lift up uh, Deb Burgess and Deborah Collins in our continuing prayers. And uh, we continue to think of the Engler family in our prayers. And uh, Norm Stedman as well. And Marie uh, Caradillo in our continuing prayers. And so we think of all these folks, and uh, and again, I'm, I'm especially I'm thinking of uh, Barry Bennett tonight. Uh, many of you know Benny. Uh, Barry would come to church regularly, and his friend Linda said that he was up at the Oak Hill um, Rehabilitation Center up in Pawtucket. Uh, but we got a piece of mail back that uh, has us puzzled. So uh, we're. Uh, we're, we're trying to find out if we can make connection with Barry. But think of Barry in our prayers because uh, he's probably in an unfamiliar surrounding. And maybe he's already made it like home. But um, I, I think of his cat, Pumpkin. And I, I, I'm not sure if Pumpkin was able to go with him. But I know if he couldn't, that would have been a hard transition. And so we think of these people. And also I think of Regina Pendleton. And you may have others too. I know there are some folks who are watching at home who, who are lifting up individuals. I know uh, Erica Ballesteros was asking for prayer over a situation that she's involved with. And, uh, again, are there others here tonight who have prayer requests? Well, let's just take a moment. Let's continue to pray. And if you've got uh, someone on your heart and mind, just lift it up to the Lord right now. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for these few minutes in the midst of a busy week. Oh Lord, the world continues to spin on its axis. And sometimes, Lord, when we look around, we're wondering where you are because there's so much hurt and so much pain. But, Lord, we know that you're in the midst of it because you are right with us. And you've called us to be light and salt in this world. And, Lord, 
I know the media doesn't focus on the positive stories, only the negative and the, the, the painful things. But Lord, we thank you that every once in a while we get a glimpse of your joy and your glory and your love and your helpfulness in some random story along the way. Or maybe we see it with our own eyes when we see an act of kindness taking place or when someone reaches out and does something unexpectedly for no reward, but just because they want to pass on your grace and your blessing. Lord, we thank you for those moments. And we would pray that there would be more of them so that the light, your light, might move and push away the darkness so that your love and your grace, your reconciliation, your hope and your peace might spread from one community to the next all the way across our land. Oh Lord, be with those who are hurting today, those who are having tests, those who are facing diagnoses that are not good, and those who are looking for encouragement. Oh Lord, even as we gather here tonight, uh, I heard that word from Ken, pandemic fatigue. And Lord, we know that uh, this long season of this COVID illness has worn on so many of us and tempers are close to flaring. Patience is worn thin. But Lord, we have you. And Lord, you be our rock and our strength. Help us to hold on and to renew our strength so that we might, as, as Isaiah says, rise up on wings like eagles so that we might move above the, the, the pettiness of the world around us and see things from your perspective and with your love. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers tonight for those who have been named publicly and those who are in our hearts that we lift up to you. Oh, Lord, be in our world. Be in our peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight I want to share with you a passage from Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1. And my, my title of my message is, You Are Not an Accident. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5 read like this, and it's right at the beginning, and it really is the call of Jeremiah to the ministry. It says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Now many of you probably have read Rick Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Life. Uh, it seems like a lifetime ago, churches, I know I was still in Norwich and we had a couple of Bible studies where we kind of read along with, with Rick and his book and whatnot. And he begins that book with a short sentence of four words, powerful words. He says, it's not about you. The purpose driven life, you would think that it's all about you or me. That, that what God wants us to do and, and, and what we're supposed to do with our life and how we find meaning and purpose. But he begins with those words. It's not about you. Warren wants us to know right at the outset that he's not writing another self-help book. If you go into the bookstores, you see there are, there are rows and rows of books on how you can be better and how you can you know, get over things in your life and all of that. But this is not one of those Warren's book was bigger than that. It isn't about us. It's about God. You may think that you're a simple result of your parents' planning and desire to have a family. You know, we saw that beautiful video with them singing. And obviously, Caleb and Kelsey, if they're singing about a child, either a child to be born or a child was there, they planned that moment. And we're excited about that moment. And they're singing as they think about what that child's life is going to be. Warren suggests, though, that even before you or I were a twinkle in our parents' eyes, God was already thinking of us. You see, you and I are not just some cosmic accident that happened. God created us, and he has a purpose for our lives. In Jeremiah 1, we hear the call of one of the greatest prophets in history. Jeremiah preached and spoke to a people in a time of national calamity, not unlike what we're going through today. The nation was under siege. The world as they knew it was changing, and the people would be carried off in exile. Everything they knew would change. Now, before a word of prophecy is spoken, we read this prologue about Jeremiah's birth. Hear it again. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. You know, if this was the only time words like this appeared in Scripture, we might think that Jeremiah was unique. But we see it in Isaiah, in the book of Genesis, in Exodus, and throughout the Old Testament. God naming and calling people even before they're born or they rise up to prominence. We see it in the birth of Jesus, where his birth was predicted hundreds of years before the actual occasion. We see it in the writings of Paul and Peter and John. When we read words like this, there can be no doubt that when it comes to your birth or mine, it wasn't an accident either. If you are here today, then God has a reason for it. No matter what the circumstance of your birth were, whether it was planned by your parents or was a mishap. I've heard people say, well, I was an accident. <laughs> There's no such thing as an accident. God was not surprised by your birth. You are here because God created you. You know, there are always, uh, when, when I preach, there are always things going on in my mind and in my life, I often say that I preach to myself um, something that I need to hear, and I know that sounds very selfish, but somehow God plants a seed and it grows, and uh, for the third time in just a couple of weeks, I was involved with a young person who had died. A couple of them had taken their own lives. It was just tragic. But I can't help but think that sometimes when someone, and it doesn't matter the age, comes to a certain point where they're ready to do something so drastic that they begin to feel that my life has no meaning and my life has no purpose. Why was I ever born? And I wish that someone had come and spoken to them and told them that their life has meaning because God created them with a plan and a hope and a purpose for them. And that any given momentary lapse in what's going on in their life was not the defining moment of who they were and what they were created to be. The Bible tells us that God knows every detail of our body. He deliberately chose our race, the color of our skin, our hair or lack of, and every other feature. He also determined your natural talents and factored in your personality. That's what I always tell Lori when she gets mad at me. I said, don't blame me, blame God. He made me that way. Maybe your spouse or someone in your life has said that as well. But when we read Psalm 139, one of my favorite psalms, it says this, For you were created, for you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb, and I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in that secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You want to take this a step farther, then think about this, that God knew where you were going to be born and when. You know, I'm reading Josh McClure's book, uh, the top of the stairs. And again, I'm, I'm just amazed as I read through the pages of his story. And I'm not done yet, but uh, maybe some of you have read it and you are. But, but as, as Josh un unveils his story and tells his story, you see the strands that tie together a life of purpose and meaning. And now Josh, as he's, as he's in his, his four score years, looking back on his life, he can begin to see how God had knit it all together and he begins to understand some things that he never understood. And, and if truth were told, some of us can do the same thing as we begin to look back on our lives and how we ended up where we were and how some of the painful moments prepared us for later points in our life. Some of the great memories gave us the strength we needed to carry through the tough times. God knew all this. In Acts 17, we read, From one man God made every nation, and he determined the time set for them in the exact places they should live. 
You know, we talk about what's going on now, the, the racial tensions in our nation, the president, and all these things that people are arguing and fighting over and struggling with. Again, the Bible reinforces the fact, not of the bad things, but reinforces the fact that God knows. And that out of this time, I believe something good will come because God is in control. And maybe we can't see it yet. But as you turn back to the pages of Scripture and you see how God has worked through time and history, we know that there is not a thing that God doesn't know. And that He's not working on in our midst. When I read through the Scriptures and passages like these, it tells me that nothing in our lives is arbitrary. Regardless of who our parents are or where we were born, God had a plan in creating us. There may be illegitimate parents, but there are no illegitimate children in God's eyes. For God even took into account human sin and error. Think about King Solomon. You know your biblical history. He was born to David and Bathsheba, a child produced out of adultery and deceit. But God did not hold that against the child. David faced his punishment. But that child, Solomon, brought glory to the kingdom of Israel and to himself. God even blessed Solomon with great wisdom. I've always said there's no such thing as coincidence. And if you believe Rick Warren, then there's no such thing as an accident. Think about my young parents in my life and how they weren't really ready to have children and it was a tumultuous time for them. And yet I thank God that I was born. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly how God wants to use me. But after reading that Rick Warren book many years ago, I know that God is working His plan through me, just as He's working His plan through you. Here's the good news. Since God created us, He's going to stick with us as well. He's not going to abandon us or leave us. The Bible tells us that time after time. The Bible tells us that God loves us and heaven and hell won't get in His way to have Him accomplish His purpose in our lives. There's a cute story, and maybe you heard it, about a young boy who came upon an old man fishing on the Mississippi River years and years and years ago. Immediately, the boy started talking the man's ear off. With patience, the man answered each question. Suddenly, the conversation was interrupted by the whistle of the river, river queen boat paddling down the river. The sight of the ship called, caused the surprised spectators to stare in awe. Then, above the minor, the noise of the paddle wheel, we heard the small boy's voice calling across the river. Let me ride! Let me ride! The old man who had entertained that boy looked down at him and said, Calm down, calm down. The River Queen is a big, big boat, and it's too important a ship to stop and give rides to little boys. But the boy kept yelling out, Let me ride! Let me ride! And the man was stunned as all of a sudden he noticed the great ship pull up and a gangplank was loaded to where they were standing. In a flash, the boy ran onto the deck. The ship, with its new cargo safely on board, began to pull back into the mainstream. The old man continued to stare after the ship, looking for the boy. A few minutes later, the boy appeared above the rail, and the boy yelled out, Mister, I knew this ship would stop. The captain knows me. He's my father. You know, a father will go to extraordinary means to show his love for his children. God doesn't forget his children. Not only did he create us and give us a purpose, but he loves us and will be with us. That's the good news of the gospel. And in John chapter 3, we read that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, a little earlier, uh, Zach Stanton was in here, and he's got a young man who's working with him, and, and he just took me aside, and I hope the young man is, I don't want to embarrass him, but um, Zach said, yeah, he says, Jamie's been asking all kinds of questions, and he kind of knows something about the Bible and religion, but I was trying to explain to him about Jesus and what he did and how much God loves us, and he says, 
I know was kind of confusing to him, and I just didn't know the right words. And I said, well, sometimes that whole mystery is too much for us to understand at first. We pray about it, and you keep talking to him about it. You see, God loves you and me so much that he broke his own rule and gave up the most precious thing in his life, his only son, Jesus. The Apostle Paul says, now nothing can separate us from his love. Not ignorance or sin, not our failing or our stubbornness, not our insecurity or our arrogance. And he calls us to turn to him and accept his love and then to live for him. And here's the best part. When we begin to live and reflect God's glory, our lives take on new meaning and purpose. And I think that's the point of Rick Warren's book. That when we begin to live for God, the one who created us, who set our lives in motion, who gave us a purpose, when we begin to live into that meaning and purpose, then all of a sudden we're no longer asking, why am I here and what am I supposed to do? Because we begin to live in such a way that we reflect the glory of God. Jeremiah knew that from the earliest days. He didn't always have an easy time of it, but that knowledge sustained him and encouraged him. Even as he struggled with those stiff-necked people, he could hear God's word. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You know, too often we settle for less in our lives. Instead of considering God, we fill our lives with meaningless pursuits because we don't know why we're here. But Jesus came to fill us up. And in John chapter 10, he says, I've come that you might have life, have it more abundantly. The word abundant is in reference to being overfilled. Now I can tell you this, a person can't have an abundant life if they feel as though there's no purpose or meaning. But once we plug into Jesus, once we turn to the Lord, then we're ready to be filled. And our life becomes overflowing with abundance. Here's the good news, the final bit of good news. Just as God told Jeremiah, he had set him apart and given him a calling in life, God has called you and me. And he's called us and sent us into the world. Ask Billy Graham, Mother Teresa, Bono of you 2 or any of the Christians who have given their life to the Lord. If they could tell you, they would tell you the same thing. When you begin living for God and doing whatever you do for Him, whether it's teaching or cooking or sewing or dancing, you will know joy and meaning like you've never known before. You see, that's what we were created for. There's an old saying that I want to close with. I love, it was my yearbook quote from high school many, many years ago. And it's simply this. What you are is God's gift to you. What you make of yourself is your gift to God. So celebrate that gift. You were not an accident. You were created for God's glory. Live and love and give God the glory. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for being with us tonight, whether you're here in the, in the prayer chapel or you are watching from home. May God bless you. And may God show you the meaning He has for your life and the purpose so that you can give Him the glory and be blessed with His joy. Amen. Until next week, we'll see you. Bye-bye.